Hello everyone, welcome to Everything Arsenal. It's Atalanta next up. The Champions League is back. The new format, our first time playing this format, obviously. It's a league phase now, no longer a group stage. And it's the second game of a very, very tough week. Tottenham away, Atalanta away, Man City away, all three games away from home. It's not going to be easy, uh, but we've managed to, you know, get uh, get past the first bump, which was um, Tottenham. Now, next up, it's going to be Atlanta. And um, considering, you know, um, eight games in the Champions League this season, no, no playing the same opponent twice or anything. Uh, we've just seen the likes of Bayern Munich scoring nine goals and things like goal difference could matter because we're all competing against each other now in one league. We are going to need to win games. And um, looking at the teams you're being drawn with, uh, drawn against, you know, Atlanta is not easy that the Europa League champions, but, you know, it's, it would be good to start um, the campaign with a win. And then next up is a home game against PSG. PSG that would be great. Now, this is going to be played on Thursday for some reason. Um, I, I'd kind of forgotten how it feels like to play on a Thursday, um, but I guess I just wanted to send us back there to, you know, for us to remind ourselves, you know, it's always good to, you know, move, move, get after you move house, get back to the house that you used to live in, just to see how it is, you know, just to visit some people. So let's go and see how Thursday looks like these days. It has been a long time. It's been a couple of seasons since we played on a Thursday, but yeah, we will be playing on a Thursday against Atalanta, away from home in Italy. The Europa League champions have said, the likes of Lukman and those kind of guys, it's not going to be easy. So, um, what am I expecting now? First of all, Atlanta. Let's 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 take a look at Atlanta. So, I am expecting a very tough game going away to Italy against the Europa League champions. I'm definitely expecting a tough game. And Atlanta this season, they've been mixed. They've been a mixed bag. This is obviously they started the season um, playing against Real Madrid in the Super Cup. They lost that game, I think, two 0 But after that, they've played four games in their league, um, just like us. And they've um, they've won two. They've lost two. They've had a four 0 win. They've had a four 0 loss. They've had a two one loss, and they've had a three two um, win. So they've scored eight. Eight goals and considered eight goals and um they can score goals but they can also concede goals and all those goals this, those games i've just told you a couple of them are home a couple of them are away you know they lost four nil at um away to inter milan but um at home to fiorentina they won three two they won um they lost four nil so i think they won four nil to let you so it's a mixed bag so we can definitely score goals in this game we don't consider a lot of goals, but um, in the Champions League last season, you know, we considered um, at PSV, we considered at Lons, we considered at FC Porto, we considered at Bayern Munich. We were never really, um, you know, considering three or four. No, we actually considered just one at Sevilla, just one at Bayern Munich, just um, one at FC Porto. So we were, we were good at keeping it tight at the back last season. So, yes, Atlanta score and consider a lot of goals. And um, this season... For us, we've kept three clinches out of four in the league, so it's very tough to know what to expect. Are we going to win this game 3-2? Is it going to be a dull nil-nil? What is it going to be? I think it's going to be, I think they're going to create chances, but I think uh, we could still end up winning this game. I will come to my prediction later on. So one thing we need to know about Atalanta, apart from the results, the other thing we need to know, they do play with the back three. So they play three defenders and then two wing backs and then two holding midfielders and then a front three. So you're going to get um, opportunities on the wings. Um, they're going to get openings on the wings, especially if they're full backs, the likes of Zapacosta go forward. You're going to get opportunities on the wings. So whoever is playing, whether it's Martinelli, Saka, Trossard, Sterling, whoever is playing on those um, wings, they're going to get a few opportunities to you know run in behind and have a, a, a couple of chances to cross the ball. We need to uh, we need to um, take advantage of that. But them obviously playing a back three as well, with their fullbacks going forward, they're going to have situations where going to, they're going to double up with the the winger and the um, and the wing back, basically the the left side or the right side of the front three. Plus the wing backs, they're going to attack our fullbacks or our our wingers. will also need to come back and defend. I'm expecting a tough game, but I'm confident we can win this game. Um, looking at the results this season, I've watched a couple of the uh, three game the games this season, including the Real Madrid one in the Super Cup, and we can definitely take advantage. But you obviously need to be careful with players like Lukman. Last season, uh, most of us uh, watched that final against Leverkusen. That was the first game Leverkusen lost all season, and they absolutely dismantled them by three goals to nil. So it's going to be a very interesting game. Let's pick up a win here, and then if you start the season with a win against um, Atalanta, again PSG are next at home. After that, you're going to have games against you know the likes of Shakhtar at home, teams like that. So I, I would be confident. And it has changed. You know, in the group stage, with the six games that you're going to play or the six games you used to play, if you like, for example, last season we beat uh, we beat PSV, and then we lost the game second game to Lons. When you win one and lose one back in the day, like last season, the third one, you basically have to win it. Because if you lose the third game, 
all of a sudden you're wide, you're third on the table or fourth on the table and the two teams ahead of you, you have to be very careful in terms of the fourth game. You pretty much have to win the rest of the three games, um, especially if results don't go your way. Now, with the league phase that we have, you know, we can lose to Atlanta and PSG and still go through. We can actually lose, we can lose four games and win four games and still go through. Now, maybe not as, as the top eight, but you could still qualify for um, the playoffs. Now, ninth to 24th will go into a playoffs. So you pretty much just need like three wins out of the eight to qualify for the playoffs. But you don't want that. You don't want to go and play an, an extra two games in January and then qualify for the round of 16. No, we want to be part of the top eight, qualify with the rest of the big boys, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, Man City, and then relax until February and wait for the, um, for the round of 16. So out of the eight games, that means maybe, I think five wins, Two draws and a loss will be enough. Um, it would be great if we can get eight wins out of eight, but we have to be realistic. You're going to face some tough teams um, like Atlanta away, Girona away, PSG at home, um, Inter Milan as well. I mean, it's not going to be easy. We're going to um, Inter Milan away as well. You're probably going to lose a game then, maybe a couple of draws. Um, tough games like Inter Milan and Atlanta away. Maybe a draw is in that bar, but I want us to start the campaign with the win against Atalanta. That is very, very important. We only really need like five wins and a draw to go through. And then the rest of the two games, if we win, if we win six, we probably finish in the top two. It's very important as well. If you can finish in the top two, it means you avoid the team that finishes first. If you finish in the top four, you could avoid maybe a Real Madrid or a Man City if they finish in the top four as well. So that would be great. That means you're not going to face them until the semifinal or the final. So the higher you finish, the better draw you get in the round of 16. But you can still go through even if you finish 23rd, but we don't want to be part of that. We want to be part of the Man City, Real Madrid and Bayern Munich group, go through as easy as possible. And considering we have the the likes of Inter Milan and PSG coming up, you have to say this is the easy one between those three games. So we have to start with a win. But which lineup would I go for? I wouldn't. I'm going to make some changes, by the way. Um, so it's going to be an interesting. I'm, I'm going to make um a couple of changes. So let's start with um with the defense. So at the Raya goalkeeper, as always, Raya is going to be the goalkeeper. No, I'm no doubt about that one. Uh, he's going to be my goalkeeper for sure. Everyone's goalkeeper. You know, we are not really going to play net in the Champions League. Um, Raya has been an incredible form as well this season. So shout out to him. He's, he basically won the save of the month last month um, for his save against Aston Villa. His save against Wolves was world class as well. And uh, he made a couple of good saves against Brighton too. And the last game that we played against Tottenham, the way he was collecting the ball from the crosses, corners, free kicks in the last 20 minutes of that game, he took away a lot of pressure from us. So we will need him to be at the top of his game in the Champions League as well. Last season, he helped us go through against FC Porto. Let's hope for more of the same. So I am going to go with um, David Ryan goal for sure. And then uh, the back four. So the three players are on the right side are going to remain the same. That's Gabriel Salib and Ben White. Um, ben White always does his job. This season he hasn't been incredible anything like that. Um, a couple of times, someone went past him over the weekend, but he's always solid. He's never really going to, he only gave away the ball once. I remember you almost considered from that, but he's always solid most of the games. You know, he never really stands out like oh my goodness ben white is a calamity anything like that he hasn't really gone forward a lot this season um uh, combining combining with sacking last season he got a few crosses and goals he hasn't really gone forward a lot um this season let's see what happens in this game um obviously there's other players coming back and timber can play there and tommy has, uh, is able to play there so he has to keep on uh, performing to play in the big game but ben white is definitely a starter and then gabriel and saliba i'm going to keep it the same i was the, i thought about trusting gabriel but i was, I was like nah, let's let them just play Keep it solid. They have a tough assignment over the weekend against Haaland. So would it be better to rest one of them? You know, but I remember, listen, Man City are playing on um, on Wednesday against Inter Milan. That's the other thing, by the way. Man City are playing on Wednesday at home and you're playing on Thursday away from home. Will it affect us over the weekend against them? The traveling and all that? Hopefully not. But um, I'll keep it the same. And then for left back, I'm going to make a change. This will be the first change I make for the, in the team. I'm going to play Kivio. Kivio will be on the left side for me. Um, if Zinchenko is fit, I would play him. I don't know if he's fit. But um, listen, Kivio going back to Italy, no problem at all. Play Kivio. Be solid defensively. I don't mind that at all. So that would be my back four. Rest Timber. Let him be uh, ready for months. We also have to be careful with Timber's minutes. He's just coming back from a nine-month injury. I mean, in the whole season he was incredible against um tottenham i'll, I'll save him for the man stick game if calafiori was there he probably plays for me here or maybe i wouldn't be too wide about timber playing here and losing him for the man stick game but rest let calafiori recover fully and timber you can rest him for this one play kivio 
I'm still a good defender. Let's work with that. Midfield, I'm going to go with Jorginho. Uh, Jorginho will be the midfield I start with. So the second change I make, Party will rest for me. No Party in this game. Once again, it's great to have Party playing a lot of 90 minutes. But remember, he played 90 minutes for Ghana twice over the international break. Played 90 minutes against uh, um, Tottenham in midfield. And then he's been always, always available this season. Let's not overuse him. You know, you also have to be a bit careful. And I want to rest him for this game. Play Jorginho, another Italian, <laughs> by the way another italian in this um in this game uh, ikiv is not an italian but he's played there before so he just played there before as well have him there control the midfield he was very good against um tottenham i thought you were going to get um dominated a bit in terms of pace we'd struggle a bit in terms of pace because of Pat and Jorginho together but they didn't get exposed at all so um fair play to them Jorginho in midfield and then in front of him Declan Rice is back I'm really really happy to have Declan Rice back a midfielder is used to play in that position um so that is one position started but we still don't know how Odegaard uh, how long Odegaard will out for i have trusted in that position i don't think he was bad against Tottenham. i don't think he was incredible i still prefer him on the wings or the forward positions some of you put maneri there i want maneri to come on in this game i'm uh, not like in the 80th minute or anything no i want him to come on early in this game if it's possible to bring him on before the 60th minute give him a solid 30 minutes i think that would be great i think um you know don't rush him too much bring him to the team slowly he's going to feature a lot this season this is the champions league at the, um, game at the end of the day yes i'd like him to feature yamal has been incredible this a lot of you have been comparing and no 10 minutes he came on against tottenham i rewatched the game again and focused on him he was very good with the touches i was like oh this is incredible i even thought about starting him but i don't want him to be started and then subbed off at half time no i don't want that so let him come on give him the last 30 minutes of the game let him you know um playing that intensity if you're leading well and good he, he was he was very good so bring him on um in the last 30 minutes or before that even better and then um rice is back as i said so that is my midfield rice georginian trossard and then one to come on and then the front three i am going to make um my other change so kivy is on for um timber um Rice has come on for party, party resting, timber resting, and then I'm going to rest one more player up front, and that is going to be Saka. Not really a rest, but you know, he went off injured, and they said it was only cramp. But I think, again, just like party, I don't want to, you know, strain Saka too much. He played 90 minutes um, over the international break and then played another like 60, 70 minutes against Finland at Wembley in the second game. Listen, keep him fit for the Man City game. When you watch Man City playing against um, Inter Milan, you don't don't be surprised if you see Foden and Rodri on the bench for that one still. Now, I think he purposely left Rodri out for those games and Foden for him for them to be available against Inter Milan and um, Arsenal this week. So sometimes you watch Man City in the Champions League. Uh, Diaz is not there, Foden is not there, Bernardo Silva is not there, they change things up. I think it's also time for us to do that. Um, I don't think it's a disaster if you rest Saka in this game. So I will rest Saka, I will play Sterling on that right side, give him the first start. I am going to start Martinelli again. Um, a lot of people have been saying Martinelli is not on form, drop him. Many of you maybe would start Trossard on the left and then Ranieri in midfield, fair enough. I'm going to give Martinelli another game. If he doesn't perform in this one, then he definitely doesn't start against Man City. Uh, maybe even if he performs, some of you would say he doesn't start against Man City, he doesn't deserve it. But um, the last time he beat Man City, he did, he did score. Um, so I'm going to start Martinelli on the left side. I am going to start um, Sterling on the right side, and then I'm going to have Havertz up top. Um, I think that is a score that can still do the job. So three changes from the weekend. I'm resting Timber. I'm resting Saka. I'm resting Party. So this is how the bench looks like. Um, Neto, Setford, Calafiori, Zinchenko, Timber, Party, Saka, Jesus, Noaneri, Lewis Kelly, Heaven, and Nichols. Um, you allowed um, around 12 substitutions um, or players on the bench. So listen, I want to see Noaneri come on, Jesus come coming on um if i've put Kalafia and zinchenko there but i don't know if they're going to be available if they're not then a couple of spots for maybe the youngsters were on the bench the other day um i don't think you have to fill the bench if uh, you don't want to if you don't travel with the players but there's still players there who can come on if we if you are losing or something saka is there you can still bring on jesus you can bring on party timba whoever um if you're comfortable in the game um whoever the game is i want still non -air to, i want to see non -air coming on if i still need some defensive cover then maybe you can throw in timber for the last 20 minutes or something bring on party for the last 20 minutes but ideally i would want um Saka and timber to rest for the entire um entirety of the game so jesus non -air, come on and then we'll see the other substitution so that is my lineup for this particular match let me know which changes you would make 
my prediction, time for the prediction. What is my prediction for this game? As I said, we keep a lot of clean sheets. I'd not be surprised if we kept a clean sheet, but you know, Atlanta scored eight goals this one, they've considered eight. Um, uh, we all have only considered one, and I think if we didn't have a red card, we'd have had um four clean sheets out of four. Our defense is so solid, and now Declan Rice is back. I'm going to go though for Atlanta to score whichever way. As I said, last season in the Champions League in all of those away matches we considered against Lons, against Sevilla, and against um, PSV, and also against Bayern Munich and FC Porto. So he considered in all five away games last season. I think that might continue, but I still think you're going to win. So Atlanta 1, Arsenal 2, 2-1 two, win. I, I don't know if those nerves from last season in the Champions League will still be there. You could tell last season we were very new in the Champions League. We are struggling a lot in most of those games. But I'm going to go for a 2-1 win. I'm going to go for Harvest to score. And I'm going to go for, um, should I go for another corner? Yes, why not? Declan Rice to whip in a corner and maybe Saliba or Gabriel to score. Why not? 2-1 to Arsenal. That is my prediction. Let me know your prediction. Let me know who you start at left back. Would you keep the team as the same with Tottenham? against Tottenham or are you worried about Man City rest a couple of players let me know thank you for watching and I'll catch up with you guys on the next